This is the last Sunday of 2013. We can't come to the end of a year without reflecting on the past. We can't project our thoughts into the incoming year without thinking about what it holds for us. But we can be assured of God's presence with us. Lo, I am with you always, even on to the ends of the earth. Matthew 28, 20. He is with each of his children always. We say here, God is always good. Always good. We may not always get what we want, but God is always good. The word that others use this time of year is a word referred to as retrospective. Just a fancy word for the past. It's used to define looking back on the year that is coming to a close. Paul uses the word in Philippians 3 and 13, forget. He says to forget those things which are behind. To make one's reflections on the past to be fruitful, forgetting must be thought of in two different ways. Positively and negatively. And so the thought here is to forget the things that were bad. Did you make some bad choices this past year? I'm sure that we all have. The thing to remember is not repeat those same choices in the new year. Try to do better in the new year. We all make wrong choices sometimes. We need to forget the unpleasant and the unhappy things. Perhaps our experiences of, we've had a time of defeat or maybe disappointment. Maybe you were expecting to receive something this Christmas and you didn't receive it. And so you are disappointed. And the guilt, these are things that we need to be forgotten. And we can do that by surrendering to our Lord for forgiveness and cleansing. In 1 John 1, 9, we read, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Each of us needs to forget the attitudes that make for pride. The Bible says that pride goeth before destruction, Proverbs 16. In 18. The Word of God also says that every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights. James chapter 1 and verse 17. The word remember is used many times in the Bible. It's to help make the past productive. It is necessary to remember that we are dependent upon God for all that He has. We need to remember the blessings and the opportunities of the past year. And usually always when God takes a loved one home, we usually think, I wish I would have spent more time with him. You think about that? Wish I would have spent more time with him. And even though you might have spent a lot of time, but when a loved one is taken, you always think you could have spent more time, wished I would have spent more time. These are the memories that we will always cherish and remember, our dear loved ones, and we will never forget those precious memories. Another word that would be prevalent in the mind of us as we reflect in the past is learn. The word learn. Did you learn from your mistakes last year? We should learn from also our achievements and we should use these to build upon for the future. It's important that you learn from your mistakes. Another word that we want to look at is the word look. We need to look at what has happened in the past and use that knowledge. A good hard look at the past and analyze for it would be profitable for the new year. Speaking to the spiritual aspect of our lives, 
reflecting on God's past dealings, will cause us to stand in awe. We're amazed when we come to realize how sinful we really are and how merciful and long-suffering the Lord is toward us. The all leads to repentance. Conscientious people will turn from their wicked ways after they reflect on the past. To behold our sinfulness and God's goodness will provoke us to repentance. One of the greatest words in the Christian vocabulary is this very special word, is forgiveness. Every sinner, the Bible assures, of forgiveness when we confess our sins. A spiritually healthy experience is to realize that we are forgiven of all of our sins. Doesn't matter what you've done. Doesn't matter what you've said. Doesn't matter what the choices you've, you've made. And we're terribly wrong. We look to the Lord and say, Lord, I need your help. Forgive me. I've done some things that was wrong. I said some things I shouldn't have said. Please forgive me. I need your help. I'll try to do better in the year ahead with your help. And then there's the word perspective, another word that's used for the future. There's some words that apply to the physical. And that one, and the word that I want to use today is the word vision. We need to think of the future in the terms of vision. Proverbs 29, 18 says, where there is no vision, the people perish. Amen. It applies to the physical as well as the spiritual. <laughs> and while we are on the eve of a new year, there's another word. Resolution. New Year's resolution. It implies purpose. <coughs> Adequate plans to be made and for motivation to expedite them. There must be purpose. Closely related to that word resolution is another word that's called determination. And it is a firmness. Before much can be accomplished in the year, determination is necessary. It will involve planning. It will involve work. It may involve sacrifice. And certainly, it will involve dedication. To be truly successful in the new year, we must realize the thought of victory. For Christians, we can be triumphant. We can be victorious. Jesus came to triumph over evil. He is victorious. And his followers have the same assurance. There are some words that apply to the spiritual realm. That I believe would be applicable. Paul said, be filled with the Spirit. Ephesians 5 and 18. It means that we are to be controlled by the Holy Spirit. And it is a must for great accomplishments in the kingdom, as well as in our own personal relationships. Paul also said, pray without ceasing. 1 Thessalonians 5 and 17. Prayer is like a vast continent, the shores of which one can touch from many directions, but a lifetime of exploration will not reveal its secrets. Prayer takes on the aspects of eternity and is also a must to make the coming year a fruitful one. Obedience to the will of God is one of the greatest desires for the new year. Whatever he says, do. Wherever he leads, follow. Complete obedience is our assurance of a full and a meaningful life in the new year. And then there's one more word that stands between the past and the future, between retrospective and perspective, and that word is now. Present. Now. In order to use the past and anticipate the future, we need to act 
now. The past is gone. The future is yet to come. We must learn our lessons from the past. Start trying now to be ready for the future. God has spoken in the past and has worked in the past. But he also has plans for the future. Now is the time to respond to the touch of the Holy Spirit. This morning, will you let the Holy Spirit fill you afresh and anew? Will you be led, be willing to be led by the Holy Spirit? To be led and guided? Like Simeon in our Sunday school lesson this morning, he was led of the Holy Spirit. And he went at that precise time in the temple when Joseph and Mary brought Jesus as it was a custom. And not only did Simeon was out, not only was he a follower of the Holy Spirit, but a widow. She would have been 91 years of age at the time. Was also allowing the Holy Spirit to, to run and rule her life. In fact, after having been married for only seven years, she gave the rest of her life to serving the Lord. Our Sunday school lesson says she was in the temple night and day, fasting and praying. I can assure you, you can have a good year in the year to come. If you will be like Simeon and Anna and be willing to be led of the Holy Spirit, let the Holy <coughs> Spirit fill you anew, afresh and anew. Every head bowed, every eye closed. I want to pray for you. Heavenly Father, thank you for this message. It spoke to my heart this morning as a need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. To be able to move, act, and go and do things in your, in your perfect will by being led of the Holy Spirit. Lord, I know, I know without even asking in this, in this assembly this morning that we have such a need to be led of the Holy Spirit. And I know that each and every one here has a desire as well to be led of the Holy Spirit. For if we're led of the Holy Spirit, there'll be a whole lot less wrong decisions. There'll be a lot less wrong choices and a lot less discouragement because of those choices if we are willing to be led of the Holy Spirit. So Lord, I pray now for each and every one here today that you will fill them with fresh and anew with your Holy Spirit. And Lord, direct their every thoughts, direct their ways, direct their actions, direct the way they speak and talk to their spouse. Lord, it will prevent them from saying things they should never have said. And it will prevent the hurt from ever being made if we are willing to let your Holy Spirit <coughs> guide and direct in this new year. We ask these things in your precious and holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody said, Amen. Lord bless you.